Good morning, everybody. So I've been told not to walk around, so I'll try to avoid moving away from the microphone. Uh, my name's Dave Stowe. Uh, I'm part of Ordnance Survey, uh, and we've been working with Trimble for the last couple of years on uh, developing a uh, offering in the land administration market, and I'll, I'll be talking more about that. It's actually in one of the technical tracks later on. But we've also been doing some work with IBM to try and understand where blockchain fits into that space. So um, I say the word blockchain, and I'm not sure whether the audience immediately goes to sleep or whether the audience immediately wakes up and says, what's that thing? But never has there been so much hype, so much misinformation that I've never experienced in the last 30 years of being in IT as uh, there has been in the, uh, when, when people say the word blockchain. So um, Ordnance Survey, together with Trimble and with IBM, have been looking at this topic uh, and trying to understand where the value really lies in blockchain. And as part of that, we've come up with the term the smart land registry, which we see as a precursor to actually gaining real value from blockchain. Um, a precursor, but not necessarily uh, a deliberate step towards using blockchain. You don't have to go down the blockchain path, but this, if you do want to go down that path and you want to gain value from it, then we see the smart land registry as the, the first step on that path. So the smart land registry uh, we define as being uh, the, where the land registration uh, authority within, an, or, uh, within a country has taken perhaps two strategic decisions. And those dis strategic decisions are firstly that they are going to move to a point where there is proper codification and proper spatial representation of both the parcels of land that are going to be administered by the organization and the uh, rights, restrictions, and responsibilities, the legal rights associated with that, uh, with that land, and properly codifying that so it is real data in a real database that can be read and understood and used by software as opposed to by people is one of the first steps towards the smart land registry. Going alongside that is the uh, process of creating a formal process of change over that register. And the, that formal process of carrying out change to the register is something I'm going to touch on uh, in particular with regard to blockchain. The second strategic decision that the land authority needs to make within a country is what is its relationship going to be with the people who are its customers? So uh, in many parts of the world, the land authority is almost a passive record of transactions that have taken place in the real world. Uh, however, the uh, trend we are seeing uh, within Ordnance Survey, Trimble and IBM is that land authorities are starting to move to a place where they offer a number of services to the uh, population of the country to help smooth the path of carrying out those land transactions. So they're moving away from just being a passive record into an active participant in the land transaction process. And together with that correct codification of the legal rights over land and the spatial aspects of the land, uh, this enables what we might call software-driven land transactions to take place where land transactions can take place in an automated manner and with minimal interaction with, from uh, people inside the land authority. The advantages of doing this are that you ease the path for people to take up the land registration system. So uh, getting people to register their land for the first time can be a challenge in some jurisdictions. Uh, getting people to use the land authority to manage their transactions when they sell or mortgage their land, then those are also challenges. And by making that process uh, digitally enabled, we see that that can be, uh, we, we can encourage take up of use of, the, of what the services the land authority offer. So that's the concept of the smart land registry. So when we say the smart land registry, we, then, we can then say, okay, so if you've reached that point where you have a truly digital record of land and its ownership and you have true digital services that enable transactions over that land, then where, what value can I gain from blockchain? So perhaps it's a good point, good place to start is to say, what, what can't you do with blockchain? Okay, so, so here are some myths. 
So blockchain won't fix poor data quality. In fact, poor data quality is a, a real problem whether you have, uh, when you're trying to move to some kind of smart land registry, fixing the data is going to be a big issue for you. Blockchain won't help. Um, understanding root of title, understanding who owns a piece of land, gaining consensus on who owns land. Blockchain won't help with that either. That's very definitely a people thing and probably involves um, uh, lawyers and negotiation and occasionally courts. Um, will blockchain help with your data collection? No, it probably won't. Uh, will blockchain help with making things faster and smoother? No, software helps with making things faster and smoother. Blockchain isn't the answer to that. Don't, don't let people sell it to you on that basis. Um, if you use it right, it can also give you some legal and policy framework headaches as well. So, um, having said all that, where do, you get, where do you get value from blockchain? And the answer is that the, if you were to narrow down on the, the real thing that blockchain does for you, is that if you are in a position where you want multiple parties to carry out a transaction, and you do not have a trusted central authority to carry out that transaction for you, and a, and a land authority is a clear example of that, then uh, blockchain can really assist in making that transaction happen in a way that everybody believes that it took place correctly and took place according to the rules. And that, to my mind, is the key value that blockchain adds. So going back to the question that I raised at the start about um, gaining value and having formal change over the register, I think one of the things that we see as an opportunity is to place uh, blockchain at, as the um, engine of managing change to the register. So uh, being, a, being an architect, I, I had to draw a diagram with boxes and lines on it, as that's, that's a formal part of my job description. And uh, that's a, a slight gag for those of you uh, in, in the audience. Um, the, uh, and we have placed the, uh, the blockchain at the heart of the land administration process here. And we have overlaid with the blockchain itself with the concept of smart contracts. So for those of you who are, uh, have not been in this world, a smart contract is just like an ordinary contract. Um, a contract written in legal language describes the rules of engagement between parties engaged in a transaction, what will, be, what will happen when the transaction has completed and what people must do in order to enable the transaction to proceed. Uh, a smart contract is very much the same, only those rules are not written in legal language, they're written in code and the code executes on the blockchain and controls access and controls the changes that are made to the chain, which, are the, which is the record of what has happened to the register. So in this kind of architecture, what we see are that the blockchain is the thing that enables change to take place to the register in a managed way. So people will interact with those smart contracts on the chain via a number of applications that are appropriate to their use case, whether they're a lender or whether they're a citizen trying to carry out a transaction or an investor. Um, and the smart contract will ensure that there is a, um, that the, the way that the changes take place with the chain are taking place within the rules. You'll also see that at the bottom there are a number of hosts so the hosts of the blockchain network are the people who validate that the transaction is taking place according to the rules. And those people will come to consensus that that transaction has taken place successfully. So what this, in, what this means is that the, um, the land authority would be one of those people who validate a transaction. But there would also be a number of other hosts of the chain who would also be able to validate that transaction. And you may imagine that those hosts could be uh, large lenders, could be large real estate agents, could be other government departments. They could even be third party organizations such as the UN or the World Bank who might wish to be seen as people validating those transactions. Um, in order to make this work, uh, we, uh, citizen identity or uh, identity of all legal entities is a key thing. So we have some identity services that will need to exist and be managed successfully by the government. Uh, and we also see that the data, on, the data when written to blockchain is actually in a quite inaccessible format. And we see one of the roles of the land authority would be to publish that data uh, available so, so people can use it and publish it into the uh, ESRI ecosystem is one of the things we see will be particularly critical to enable analysis of, the, uh, of who owns what land. 
So that sounds like a, a possible use of blockchain where you can get real value. But I have some questions to ask. So is the technology itself mature enough? And I, I guess if you'd asked me a year ago, I'd have said 100% no. Uh, and now I would say maybe 50% no. The technology is uh, moving very rapidly and it is getting to the stage where it can, can do that job and be ready for it. Um, are your citizens ready for this kind of technology? Are they digitally enabled? And more importantly, have you, identified, have you got proper citizen identity sorted out? Uh, as this is a, a key aspect of actually being able to leverage technology like blockchain. Um, I've no doubt that if the smart land registry starts to offer some kind of set of services that enable uh, land transactions to take place, there'll be a number of legal framework challenges that would need to be addressed. And I guess the last question I'd ask here is, is this worth doing in comparison to some traditional software engineering techniques? And perhaps to answer that, I'll say, so okay, what are the opportunities for value that are created? So those opportunities to me are that the fact that you can have multiple parties validating and coming to a consensus that a transaction took place according to the rules and took place correctly, that is a key part of increasing trust between citizens and government departments in jurisdictions where this is a challenge. Um, it also enables great, greater levels of visibility um, uh, with appropriate access controls, of course, people can validate that, what's, that the register that they see is, is actually the result of the transactions that took place upon it. And again, this, this visibility is a means of increasing trust. By implementing the technology, you do automatically create a means of uh, uh, smoothing the information flow across a variety of uh, business entities. And you create opportunities for fractional investment, the opportunity to uh, buy a thousandth or a hundred thousandth of a building and uh, improving the uh, trust in foreign investments that, can take, uh, that, that might, you might want to take place. So these opportunities for increasing land market liquidity and in, uh, enabling foreign investment are also a key part of what blockchain can provide. So there are some opportunities there, and there is value to be found, um, but it does mean you are changing the engagement model between uh, the way people work and the land registry, and that's part of becoming that smart land registry. So thank you.